Oh man, everyone. One day at a time, one day at a time. Welcome back to the studio. No filming outside of the studio today. I did do cross training today. No major updates. I'm just trying to be patient. I still have the boot on, uh, doing a little bit of walking around my house and it feels okay. I know it's not ready for anything beyond a little bit of walking. So I'm just gonna stay patient and keep hitting that aqua jogging as best I can. And yes, I do have some ideas to uh, dress up the studio a little bit uh, moving forward, so stay tuned. I just have some thoughts on lighting, and yes, it's getting a little tight in here with respect to where to put all the shoes when I'm talking uh, with all of you about the different types of shoes to use for different types of runs, like what we're gonna do right now. And yes, today's vlog could easily be broken up into three, four, five different videos, and maybe down the road I will do that. For example, make one vlog all about uh, running shoes just for a tempo day, or running shoes just for easy days, etc., etc. But for today, I'm gonna pick out five different types of runs that we covered yesterday. If you haven't seen yesterday's vlog, I broke down uh, basically 11, 11 different types of runs that you can incorporate into your training uh, plan. Upper right hand corner, go watch it if you'd like. And all 11 runs are, yeah, explained and broken down. But today I'm gonna, t I'm gonna grab five of those runs and attach running shoes to those runs. So. Let's dive in. Does that sound good? And by the way, I hope you had a good day. I hope you had a good run. Uh, I see your runs happening on Strava. I'm getting a little a little antsy, as I mentioned yesterday, about not racing well. It's getting a little more difficult for me to hop onto Strava and to do more global running and see. It just looks like you guys are having a great time. I see your photo, so I'm glad you're out there just pounding ground and getting the wind in your hair and tossing in some miles into those legs. So. Anyway, ha, ah, here we go. So we're gonna start off with the easy run. That's right, so what is the goal? As I mentioned yesterday, what is the goal of an easy run? To recover, to make sure your legs are ready for tomorrow's run, right? That's the goal of an easy day, a recovery run. You wanna make sure you're ready to rock and roll the next day or the next day. And I also use easy days for warming up my legs uh, for when I get back home after the run to stretch really well to foam roll and so that is the goal of the easy day now Oh my goodness, we got a lot of options for you for ease and keep in mind, I do not own every single running shoe out there on the market, although the collection continues to grow and I'm excited about that. And again, when I buy new running shoes someday, 100K, we're gonna buy you new running shoes, folks out there. But for now, uh, I don't own every shoe, but I'm working on building up the collection. So I'm gonna go with my favorite first. It's no surprise that the New Balance Beacon is my favorite easy day running shoe. Some people use the Beacon for faster paced runs and that's fine. I think the reason I don't do that, I think the upper, this uh, knit upper is not quite of an, uh, it doesn't lock down on my foot uh, tight enough for faster paced runs. And I know some people that use this this shoe for half marathon races and I've even heard somebody use it for a marathon. It's not quite that type of shoe for me. Uh, but again, my gait cycle and my foot strike is different than everybody else's. And so I love this shoe for the easy day. I love how nimble it is. I like, uh, I like a, an easy day shoe to have some flexibility in it to, in order to stretch out my soleus and my calves especially. Uh, and my, you know, to give some nice stretch to that Achilles tendon area. Uh, so, because, see how, I, I hate to even do this, but see how flexible that is. That is what I'm looking for in most of my easy day shoes. Number two, oh my goodness, I forgot to grab it. It's actually on my right foot. My left foot has the boot. My right foot is the, I'll, I'll get a, I'll get some B-roll shots for you. It's the Ultra Torin 3.5, a zero drop shoe. When I'm really feeling tired and like I need a good, or actually, I'm sorry, when I'm really feeling sore I love the ultra touring to stretch because it's zero drop uh, to really stretch out the entire uh, kinetic chain it's a, it doesn't quite get the uh, the hamstring but it really gets everything I would say below the knee really really well for stretching okay number three for an easy day shoe is of course the Nike Pegasus 35 uh, I, I like this shoe I don't love this shoe 
some people love it and I will probably acquire the Pegasus 36 very soon uh, but the reason I don't love the Pegasus 35 quite as much for my easy day it's a little more rigid a little more stiff through not even necessarily through the midsole but more so through the outsole I think Nike could actually uh, parse down the outsole rigidity and it just feels a little stiff in the landing uh, for an easy day shoe. This could almost be a little more of, not tempo day, but between a tempo day and an easy day. So anyway, but I do put it in the easy day category uh, for me. Okay, here we go. Now, what is the goal of a threshold run? To go faster, almost race pace. So you wanna think, okay, if you have a race day shoe and you know how heavy your, your race day shoe is, what it feels like on your legs, on your feet, then think to yourself, okay, if I'm looking for a threshold run shoe, a shoe for faster, longer uh, workouts, think of a shoe that's a little more support, a little more cushion than your race day shoe. So that would be for me, the New Balance Zante. Uh, this is the V4, but I've also heard great things about the, the Zante Pursuit. Uh, I really like this shoe. Uh, you got to be a little careful uh, if you have an a injury history like I do. So I didn't use this shoe quite as much this last training block, but this could be an option for you. The New Balance Zante V4 or the Pursuit of oh, Fast and Snappy in the shoe. Okay, the next shoe, the Adidas Audios 4. You know how much I ran in the shoe the last training block. Probably too much. I made a little bit of a mistake using this shoe for a couple of middle distance days and one long run. Instead, drop down the volume in this shoe and just use it for faster, shorter, snappy threshold runs. Anything from like four miles, well, you could even do like three miles up to maybe eight miles for a nice solid, depending on what distance of race you're getting ready for. So that's another option. Moving on, oh, uh, let's see, we'll go here. Uh, Carbon Rocket for sure from Hoka, pretty, uh, uh, it's a one millimeter drop. I think they're gonna bump up the drop in this shoe someday. But uh, so far, I'm pretty, I'm still pretty excited about this shoe. Uh, I can't wait to get healthy and take it out for some faster, snappy uh, threshold runs. And moving on to one more shoe from Nike. That's right, the Nike Zoom Fly Flyknit. Oh man, it has a carbon fiber plate, just like the Carbon Rocket does. It has a carbon fiber plate in here, so definitely you can feel a little bit of snap from that carbon fiber plate. And I like the stack height uh, just to protect my legs a little bit. Again, this last training block, I learned some lessons, but uh, I do like this stack height being, I think it's 33 millimeters, so it's a little higher. It will absorb a little more of that, uh, the, of that pounding, especially if you're doing threshold runs on pavement harder surfaces so that is another option and you might be wondering why not the turbo i think the turbo is a little too loosey-goosey through the upper for faster snappy work i put the the turbo from nike the pegasus 35 turbo uh into the middle distance and or even long run category just saying so anyway okay and moving on to long run number three what should be the goal of a long run shoe you want to protect your legs you don't want to be over tired or over sore from the pounding from a long run and for me most of my long runs are from 18 to 22 miles depending on where i'm at in the training block for you it might be 12 miles it might be 16 it might be eight wherever you're at doesn't matter uh but the goal is you want to make sure you're not beating your legs up too much you, you know you're not trying to go over you know too fast in a long run it's just nice steady aerobic running i just heard the ups truck drive off so that means the shoes are on the front uh, front porch that is exciting we will open those up for you tomorrow okay so long run shoe number one option number one is the turbo for me love it because it's lightweight so it doesn't wear out my legs too much from carrying you know 10 ounce shoes or 11 ounce shoes for 20 miles. Uh, so I love it for that reason. And it is so fast and snappy. Sometimes I do drop it down to a tempo day or a middle distance day. Okay, shoe number two, also from Nike. Oh, the Vomero 14. Give it a shot, everybody. 
I cannot use this shoe for some reason. The, sh the lacing system doesn't work for me on the top of my foot. And I maybe down the road, maybe the Vimero 15, I'm hoping something has changed through the lacing system. But I still love the ride in the Vimero 14. I would strongly consider, especially if you're a heavier set runner, like if you're big and strong, 200 plus pounds, like you're just like, you're like a linebacker out there putting, putting in a long run. This shoe could be a champ for you. So the Vimero 14, I do love the ride a ton. Okay, moving on. The Skechers Razor 3. Yeah, I'm not afraid to put it in the long run category. Um, it, it might qualify more for middle di uh, a middle distance run, which is like 15% of your weekly volume of running. But, um, oh man, it's, it's, it's borderline. It's borderline between between long run and middle distance for me. And uh, the only concern about the Razor 3 probably is the durability. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty concerned about the outsole wearing out only after like 120 miles, but the ride is nice, good cushion, and run type number four, the uphill run. Now I'm not talking about hill repeats. That would be kind of a different class of shoes in my book. So for what is an uphill run? Basically a sustained uphill effort and it means you probably have to come back down unless you're like getting picked up at the top of the mountain or you're taking a gondola a gondola ride back down so keep that in mind in choosing your shoes you what goes up must come down so the uphill run for me is any run sustained uphill effort of 30 minutes or more so you're just running uphill with no downhill for 30 minutes what what does that mean it means you're up on your toes most likely hopefully a lot of up up on your toes type of running which means you're also putting quite a bit of torque on your Achilles tendon, your heel, just that whole uh, area right where your Achilles tendon is attaching to your heel. Okay, you know this. Can anybody guess right now? Of course, it's the Big Bad Wolves. The Solomon Speed Cross 5 is the first shoe I would put on my legs, on my feet, for an uphill effort, and I cannot wait to put the Speed Cross 5 back out onto the trails this summer once I'm healed up. So this has a 10 millimeter drop, uh, which is pretty high for a trail shoe. And why do I like a higher drop for uphill running? Basically, it takes a little bit of that torque, of that pressure off of the Achilles tendon. And when you're doing a ton of uphill climbing, like it really makes a difference in my opinion to have a higher drop so that your heel doesn't have to drop down so much to the ground when you're just trudging up the side of that mountain every single step. Now, I am definitely a huge Solomon fan when it comes to any trail running. Uh, keep in mind, a lot of Solomon shoes do run a little more narrow, uh, so it's a pretty, it's a really nice lockdown feel, but if your feet are very wide, you might not be able to squeeze into a Solomon shoe. Okay, another one is the Solomon Ultra, and just so you know, the Solomon Ultra 2 is now out. I don't own it yet. Uh, but if you're looking at a trail, an uphill trail that is more buffed out, like if you're running up a ski mountain, uh, you might want to take a look at the Ultra over the Speed Cross 5. I should have mentioned, oh gosh. So the Speed Cross 5 has huge lug depth. Uh, you can see the lugs there on the bottom, which is great for uh, loose, loose dirt, loose rocks, mud, snow. You know that shot I, I showed in yesterday's vlog, like these guys just eat up loose, uh, loose surface conditions uh, for trail running. And if you're looking to do some uphill racing this summer, which, oh, I'm just hoping I can get out there as soon as possible to uh, tear it up in the Solomon S-Lab Sense 6 SG. Uh, the Sense 7 is now out. Once again, I haven't bought it yet. Actually, it kind of is a reminder. I need to pick that up for my 2019 uphill training uh, tra uh, trail racing season, meaning the Pikes Peak Ascent, meaning uh, the Vail Hill Climb, meaning a I might even go up to Jackson Hole and do a race up in Jackson Hole. So this guy, and what does the SG stand for? It stands for soft ground. So again, the lug depth is pretty is pretty good. I think it's about five millimeter lug depth, whereas the Speed Cross 5s are closer to six or seven. Um, I'll have to confirm that for you. And I just love this guy. Again, the Sense 7 is now out. And run option number five. I'm going to throw a curveball at you. You might think I'm I was going to choose like interval training or threshold or uh, tempo runs, but instead I'm going to throw a curveball. Yes, I'm going to say strides. Why? Because I want to make a point. Strides, we talked about them yesterday. Again, go watch it. But basically, strides are so critical for keeping your turnover up, recruiting fast twitch muscle fibers in your legs, and 
preparing your legs for race day. So the last 25% of a training block. So let's say you have a 12, re 12 week training block. The last three weeks, I would recommend doing strides at least twice a week for maybe even as much as six strides at 80 to 90% of your all out sprint in the racing shoe that you're going to use on race day. Why? To get your feet, to get your all, your entire, your entire kinetic chain ready to rock and roll, but ready and used to uh, the, your race day shoes, to get out all of the chances of a blister, to make sure your feet are happy in your race day shoes. So three weeks out from the race day and do four strides twice a week. Or if your shoe of choice is the Saucony Fast Twitch 8 or 9, I would put these on twice a week again. And so when do you do strides? I do my strides after a tempo day or after an interval day. And basically, you'll do your tempo run. Let's say it's 10 miles. You'll stop. You'll switch shoes right after your tempo day. So let's say you do your tempo day in the carbon rocket. Then you switch into your race day shoe if it's the fast twitch eight. Boom, try and switch as quick as possible. Let's say two minutes or less. And then boom, four strides back and forth. Might take you three or four minutes to do it. Not that long. And uh, just again to get your legs used to the weight of the shoe and to get your feet used to the feel of the shoe. Uh, yeah, just to get them used to the feel of the shoe. Or if it's the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit, whatever it might be, whatever you're racing on race day. Again, you don't have to do it your entire training block. I like to do it the last 25% of the training block uh, just to get... Uh, and it's a little bit up here too. It's a little bit up here. Just saying, okay. Uh, it's like when it's like in Seabiscuit or some of those horse racing movies, Secretariat, when they just start to use. I, I've seen it in one of those movies where they start to let the horse know that race day is coming. I forget what they do. Whether it's like they change their diet a little bit or they uh, they put on their racing saddle over the training saddle. Anyway, it's just to get a little primed and ready to rock and roll in the feet and up here. All right, and we are going to do pairing for the keyword. Why? Because we are pairing the different types of runs in our training block to the different types of shoes that are out there on the market. And that leads to the question of the day. I don't own every single running shoe on the planet. So therefore, what shoes out of the five categories we talked about today, what shoes are in your rotation for one of those five, all right? Break it down. If you wanna do more than one, that's fine too. Uh, just let us know. Teach us your ways, wise ones out there in the YouTube running world. We love you. Thank you for being here. Thanks for watching. I know that was a lot, but I'm just trying to in instill as much experience and hopefully wisdom as possible uh, during this time of healing for my foot. And uh, I hope I'm I hope I'm living up to this daily vlog thing. Just so you know, it it, it it kills me not to be able to go out and run and film for you. But I'm just being patient and uh, knowing that it's gonna work out in the end. So seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Good day. Good day.